I'll tell you my priority. Protect religious liberty, protect people of faith, and protect Americans who believe in the true meaning of marriage. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. I yield back. You just listened to Republican Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler, or as I like to call her, Icky Vicky, cry while pleading with her colleagues to reject marriage equality. Well, unfortunately for her, she's going to be crying herself to sleep tonight because her colleagues did not listen and they voted in support of marriage equality because the motion passed 258 to 169, with even 39 Republicans supporting the bill. So... Sorry, Vicky. Too bad. I wish that I could have seen her reaction when the bill passed, and I really want to see what she says and how she reacts more specifically when Biden signs this into law, because this is entertaining to me. This is one of those instances where you just need to mind your own business, Vicky. If you don't like gay marriages, then the solution is simple. Don't get gay married. But she's like, oh, well, you see, I know that you and your husband consent, but I don't consent to your marriage. Tough shit, Vicky. Move on with your life. Society has moved on and left you and your antiquated way of thinking behind. So move on. But she's not going to move on. And she's so distraught that I have a marriage that she's crying. I mean, she's crying in front of everyone. Like, the world is watching. And she thinks that we're going to find her argument compelling. No, you're an absolute child, Vicky, throwing a temper tantrum. And I find it hilarious. So, um... I've got to say, Vicky is probably one of my new favorite members of Congress because it's evident that gay people live in her head rent free. She recently shared a photograph of herself with Lori Smith, who is the web designer who's suing the state of Colorado for the right as a business owner to discriminate against gay people. And Vicky has also collaborated with the Family Research Council by appearing on their podcast multiple times and sharing posts from them attacking the Respect for Marriage Act. And this is significant because a sitting member of Congress is collaborating collaborating with an organization that the Southern Poverty Law Center designates as a hate group, explaining the Family Research Council often makes false claims about the LGBTQ community based on discredited research and junk science. The intention is to denigrate LGBTQ people as the organization battles against same-sex marriage, hate crime laws, anti-bullying programs, and the repeal of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy. They've also smeared gay people as pedophiles. They've referred to transgender as a cult, which is ironic given that this is an evangelical organization and they themselves are in a cult, so you'd think that they know about cults, but their goal essentially is to erase LGBTQ plus people from society, and you have a sitting member of Congress aligning with this genocidal organization out in the open, too. So you'd think that she'd have some shame, but she's shameless. And in this bill, there are explicit protections for religious liberty, like churches actually have the right to discriminate against gay people and turn down gay wedding requests. It's not like they already weren't able to do that, but they explicitly have that right now because of the Respect for Marriage Act. Their protections is enshrined into the law, and that's why the Mormon Church has come out after being vehemently homophobic and endorsed this because they see that it very clearly gives them permission to say gays are bad and we don't want them here in our churches. We don't want to marry them. But yet, she's skeptical and she doesn't think that that's going to be the case, and she thinks that even though the rights of religious people are enshrined in this same law, well, it's still bad because gays are trampling on people's rights. She'll talk about this with no uh, example. So here's what she said on a recent podcast for, you guessed it, the Family Research Council. They act like they're being so magnanimous in this bill to, to protect our pastors, so not force them to uh, carry out same-sex marriage uh, marriage ceremonies, and yet they trample on the freedom of everyone else in this country and the rights that are en enshrined in the First Amendment. And so it's a very sad situation, and it's deceiving, uh, and people need not be deceived by this. It is a disrespect for marriage, and it is very uh, it's going to continue to trample on the freedoms of, of Christians to believe and to act and live according to their faith in this country if this passes. 
So she admits that pastors can discriminate because of this law, but at the same time, it's not good enough because gays are trampling on the rights of everyone else. So I don't even know what that means. What example are you proposing here? Well, there is no examples because what she means is gays are trampling on our rights because we exist. That's what it comes down to. She doesn't want queer people to exist. And somebody who's so hyper-focused on another group, on what other people do in the privacy of their own homes, I've got to say it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some lesbian scandal with Vicky. Like, th this much focus is just absurd to me. As a gay man myself, I don't think about homosexuality as much as Vicky does. So there's probably some skeletons in her closet that she's trying to hide. But either way, um, she wasn't the only Republican who made a fool of herself. I mean, she was the most embarrassing out of all of them. But there were some other Republicans that I want to highlight for also saying very stupid things. Honestly, the bill should be called the Disrespect for Marriage Act. This bill certainly disrespects God's definition of marriage, a definition that has served his creation well for more than 5,000 years of recorded history. And his definition is the only one that really matters. This bill would codify into federal law the Supreme Court's wrongly decided Oberfeld decision and ensure that the marriage laws in the most liberal state, irrespective of how radical they might become in the future, think polygamy, bestiality, child marriage, or whatever, must be legally recognized in all states. It was wrong when the Supreme Court made law in the Oberfeld decision requiring that the marriage law in Massachusetts had to become the law of the whole country when Massachusetts approved gay marriage. This was overriding the will of the people and their elected representatives as no other state to that point had been able to pass through referendum or state legislature a gay marriage law. The fact is traditional biblical marriage is the foundation of a strong society and a strong culture. I'll say it once again. Almost everything that plagues our society is a failure to follow God's design for marriage, morality, and the family. The perfect, omniscient, immutable God knows what he's doing. But this legislation repeals the correct de definition of marriage in federal code and requires the federal government to recognize any marriage if the marriage was valid in the state where it was performed. And a deep appreciation for and commitment to following science also in the positive endeavor of the gentleman's time has expired. The human race is important. You might have missed it at the end because he was getting cut off, but he actually said that we should reject marriage equality because of science, because we have to respect science. Um, first of all, what's your stance on vaccines? Actually, don't tell me because I'd argue that you don't respect science. But um, are you basically saying that gays should be forced to breed? That's why we should disallow gay marriages because they won't want to breed and procreate if they're in same-sex marriages. I mean, I don't understand what these Republicans expect if you just ban gay marriages. It's not like gay men and gay women are going to start having heterosexual sex. You're just keeping them from living to their full potential, having full equality. But these are idiots. And we see the same argu arguments from Bob Good, for example, who claimed that marriage equality is going to lead to bestiality. We've heard this argument for decades now, and it still hasn't happened. And let me tell you why this isn't going to happen. It's because, unlike two adults, an animal is not able to consent. As Kyle Kalinske put it best in 2014, 2015, he said that Shamu can't consent if you want to stick your pecker in his blowhole. But two adults can consent to marriage. So... That's why bestiality is not related here. Uh, but I don't want to just focus on the negative because, yes, it is fun to laugh at these clowns. But really, this is historic. This is huge. To think of how far we've come, it is inspirational because we don't make a lot of progress in this country. But the progress that we've made with regard to gay marriage, it really is something to um, – to be happy about because back in 1992 or three, I'm not sure what the year was, but Bill Clinton signed the Defense of Marriage Act into law, which banned gay marriages at the federal level. And that was seen as the compromise supported by Democrats as the alternative to a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage, essentially. But now we see them effectively repealing that and even getting some Republican support for it. That is something that makes me a little bit happy. But that's not to say that the fight is over because there are a lot of different areas where we have to fight for LGBTQ plus rights and especially fight for trans rights. But this is a huge step in the right direction. And people like Vicky are going to continue to cry 
but good. Her tears are delicious, and her tears and her sadness over this fuels me. So, yeah, keep fighting, and these bigots will keep crying, because that's the only thing that they're good at. Super total yuckiness that makes us wanna sing. Icky Vicky, 